G'day everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. So we're going to look at something quite specific, um, but really interesting. Really interesting how you can combine lots of things in, in uh, Power BI, especially with DAX, and find a, a pretty good insight uh, that um, you know you, is very actionable, very um, very usable in a um, you know a business business or corporate environment where you know you you need to track your customers or you want to track your customer behavior. What are they doing? What are they purchasing? When are they purchasing purchasing it? Now the specific insight we're going to look at here is how many days since the last purchase a customer any any customer has made, right? And so we have to walk through a few steps in regards to working that out. And we also want to look at for each customer, um, we want to then bring um, in our data model and say, okay, well, for each uh, different region that we sell in, when was the last customer purchase uh, for that particular region? Um, and then what? How, how many days since that last purchase has it been? Okay, so we've got to work, walk through a, a few steps, so, so, so let's jump into it. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to work out, okay, well, when was a customer's last purchase, right? And so if we have a very quick look at the data model, uh, actually we'll jump to the table, we'll jump to my, we'll jump to the transaction table. You'll see here that we have a purchase date in this table, right? So we, in theory, for every single customer, we can say, okay, well, after that filter is placed, what is the very last date that they have purchased? And so if I come uh, to my formula here, it's date of last purchased, you'll see all we need to do actually is go last date sales of the purchase date. So all we do is we go in, so for this particular result, uh, this customer is filtered and then we have all that's left in the sales table is all the dates that they actually purchase and then last date comes in and looks and finds that very last date and then it returns that particular date and that's why for this uh, Greg rejection, that's why we're getting this particular result here. But then if you think about what we need to do, we need to go and work out, okay, what is the last sale date of everyone? So for everything. And so, um, you know, most of the times, so let's say you've got live data, right? Then that's going to be, say, today. So it could be as, as simple as just writing today as a function. But in this case, this is a demo data set. So I have to kind of create my last day uh, with, within it. And because uh, this data set, I actually just sort of pushed out into a random date. The way that I actually work that out is uh, with this formula here. So I go, okay, well, I want to find the max purchase date of the entire sales table or transaction table or whatever table you're looking at, right? And so this is this is how I've achieved it. And then if I actually drag this um, into this uh, table, you'll see that the very last day in this particular case is the, um, the 6th of the 1st. So that's the 6th day of, of January 2018. So that's the last date that I've got in my demo data set. But from here, from here, we can now work out the days since the last purchase, right? Because we have the last purchase date of everything um, and, then, and then we have the last individual purchase date of each customer. And so all we've got to do is go this one minus this one and that's going to give us the days since last purchase. Now there is one consideration that we need to make here. I want you to have a look at this formula where I where I put this in value. Now what you find if you go a date minus a date, it actually returns a, a date format uh, a, a number in a date format and then um, also you might some, sometimes might actually produce a text value and so what value does is it actually turns a text value into a number so if you if you do have a, a value which is a number and it's returning text as a measure and you can't figure out you know, it doesn't actually give you an option to change it here uh, then you can use value to change that over. Now the one other thing to note, and, and you'll see here I've got a bit of logic um, in this formula as well, is that when I actually select, say, Florida here, uh, you will see uh, that I've, I've got, I would, well, actually, sorry, if I didn't, um, let's have a look, last purchase date, days and size, if I didn't have, if I did not have this as blank, check, check out what happens to my results. So if I come up here and I select Florida, you'll see that we get um, because this these uh, this is just this is our entire customer list and in in the current context of Florida uh, it's actually returning this customer even though they never actually bought in Florida and so what we have to do is we say we have to say okay well don't return this result if they didn't even make a purchase and so the way we do that is we go um, if is blank uh, date 
of last purchase, then equal to blank. And so you'll, you'll do this a lot in a lot of your, this logic in a lot of your models. Uh, and then, but when we do it, it um, comes up and makes, makes a lot more sense. And so what's so cool is that we can just click around and quickly see, okay, and think about how from a marketing perspective or a customer outreach perspective, um, or from a um, digital marketing perspective, this is really powerful stuff because you might want to uh, add specific marketing or advertising to these specific customers. If they haven't interacted with you or bought with you for a long time, then maybe there's some really special offer that you can send to them via their email or a mail out, um, you know, and you could automate it off the back of this. What you could also do, what I, what I thought when I was creating this, is you could, instead of getting the entire list of customers, I mean, in theory, what you could do is you could say, okay, well, if a customer breaches, say, this 300-day uh, threshold, uh, so let's actually write it in, um, last purchase 300 days ago, you could write some logic inside of here you could say if um, days since last purchase is greater than greater than or equal to 300 then days since last purchase if not equal to blank and then you could actually create a chart so I'm just I'll just show you what, what I mean by this you could create a chart that just showcases that just showcases those particular clients, those most at-risk clients, or or those clients that um, require a, a, a very special deal. So it's just amazing how quickly you can branch out right into these um, into these fantastic insights. Uh, just turn this back to maybe the data bars is a, probably a better option here. And so these are your most at-risk clients and you're only going to actually show them in the particular table. And then, you know, as people tip into this particular um, insight, then, or this, this they, 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 they breach that threshold and then that should set off sort of alerts or warning bells and you should be going out and, and you should be marketing to those clients or, or, or having some sort of um, event for those clients or something, something like that. So that, that's, that's a commercial aspect of this insight, which I think is really, really powerful. Okay, so uh, hopefully you enjoyed that one. Um, you can download this uh, resource uh, just through Enterprise DNA um, on online. So check that out. It's in the description below. Uh, it just requires a small investment. Um, and certainly subscribe to Enterprise DNA um, TV. Heaps of content coming out on Power BI um, very regularly. So, so keep a watch out for that. Um, and until next time, hope you enjoyed this one. All the best. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.